Why do you think there has not been another terrorist attack on U.S. soil since 9-11? And as president, how would you prevent that from happening again? Katie, I think we ought to give credit to the administration, to the president, and to the dedicated people who have worked from the level of our intelligence agencies around the world to the local policemen, firemen, first responders who have done such a magnificent job. I also, in a little straight talk, think there's always an element of luck involved. I thank God every day, and so do all of us Americans. I, I think that we ought to have a closer relationship probably between Republican and Democrat on this. When we let our intelligence capability to monitor communications amongst would-be terrorists or or terrorists and we were gridlocked for so long is an indication that perhaps we've lost the, the unity that characterized America after 9-11. So I would work more closely with the leaders of Congress. I know them well, but I also think that we should unleash more of America's technology. When you say technology, more technology, yeah. what Whether exactly be, do you mean? There's satellites, there's uh, the kinds of technologies that are being developed in our national labs as other places. And by the way, part of that technology I left out, and that's human intelligence. Our technological capabilities are pretty good. They're going to get better, and we've got to work on getting them better. But we still haven't got the kind of human intelligence that can tell us the intentions of the enemy. Well, I think that the initial invasion into Afghanistan disrupted al-Qaeda, and that was the right thing to do. I mean, we had to knock out those safe havens, and, and that, I think, weakened them. Um, we did some work in strengthening our homeland security apparatus here. Uh, obviously, the average person knows that when they, or they go to the airport because they are going through taking off their shoes and uh, all that. Um, the problem is, when we got distracted by Iraq, we gave al-Qaeda time to reconstitute itself. And we now know, based on all the intelligence available to us, that they, in fact, have set up safe havens back in uh, Afghanistan, the hills between Afghanistan and Pakistan. They are now carrying out uh, very aggressive actions against U.S. troops in Afghanistan, and they are training uh, to attack the United States once again. Uh, so now, my hope, obviously, is, is that uh, we continue to prevent them uh, from uh, being able to move at all out of those safe havens. But uh, our intelligence indicates that, th that, uh, that the danger, the likelihood of a potential attack is significantly higher now. And, and that has been an enormous mistake that I intend to correct when I'm President of the United States. What one personal flaw do you think might hinder your ability to be president? Um, I, I don't think there's a, the, there's a flaw that would hinder my ability to, to function as president. I think that all of us have things we need to improve. Um, you know, I, I've said during the primary that my management of paper uh, uh, can sometimes be a problem. You can come up with uh, something better than that, well, though, no, no, can't no. you? Well, the, uh, it, I just use it as an example of something that I'm constantly trying to work on. What is often a strength can be a weakness. So, you know, for me, uh, there are times where I want to think through all our options. And at some point, you've got to make sure that we're uh, making a decision. So far, at least, uh, I've proven to be pretty good about knowing when that time is. Uh, and and uh, I, I think, as president, with all the information that's coming at you constantly, you're never going to have 100% information and you've just got to make the call uh, quickly and, and, and surely. And uh, you know, I think that uh, that's a capacity that uh, I've shown myself to have. You know, I'm not an objective observer. I would think that probably, I think that would have to be to make sure that I don't make any decisions that are not fully informed by every source of information that's credible I can possibly get. When I see and read history, I see sometimes that presidents make judgments 
that they only consulted a small circle of people. And sometimes those were only those who agreed with that president. I've got to make sure that I reach out to Democrats, to Republicans, to people who have opposing views. Because when we're making decisions about the future of the country, you cannot discount practically any viewpoint. So what happens to presidents in history is they get in bubbles and they don't get all the information they need to make the best judgments. I've got to guard against that.